Well, hello everybody. Welcome to Red Neck and Eyes. The home of the do-it-yourself trucker. When everything goes wrong, you got a Red Neck and Eyes. Hey, what's going on truckers? Hey, thanks for watching. Yeah, I took a little time off and now I'm putting in a little extra time here at work and uh, want to get some videos shared out to you for uh, what all went on here in the last couple of months. Uh, you know, it's hard to believe we're... Uh, we're only about halfway through the year. You know, we still got a week left in June. And, uh, I mean, it feels like we should be in November or something already. It's crazy. But, uh, you know, I think we should give those murder hornets another go around. That, that seemed to, didn't last that long. You know, uh, shoot. Uh, we just give them a fair shot. I think that, uh, we just skipped right over to the riots and, and it just didn't, you know, uh, it didn't feel like we got our money's worth on those murder hornets. We need to bring those back. I need to, uh, get a hold of president snow and let him know that, uh, that level just wasn't, wasn't good enough. So, uh, so yeah, it's crazy. I, uh, you know, pretty much every truck show, they either gone virtual or just straight up canceled. And, and, uh, uh, we hear it redneck and eyes. We, we're, we're just anchoring, we're itching real bad for a truck show. So, uh, we're hoping that we can, uh, you know, get, get to one soon. If not, we're definitely going to hit it hard next year. And, uh, and we're really looking forward to all that. So I wanted to give everybody an update on a couple of things that happened uh, this over the last time. You know, everybody's been paying attention to the mainstream news. And, of course, you know, we had our protest. Uh, you know, I bet you the White House, I bet you old Trump, he's probably saying, hey, bring back them truckers and let them truckers camp out on that street. That was that was a better protest. I like that one better. That little, you know, went, went kind of smoothly, you know. I mean, hell, at least we picked up our trash, right? I don't know. But, uh, hey, uh what happened was is, is uh, a couple of things happened in addition to all the new stuff that went on, and uh, I wanted to fill y'all in on it, and it kind of it kind of hit, hit a nerve with me. But uh, before I did that, I wanted to uh, let everybody know. Of course, you know we got a great sponsor out there, and that's Trucker Tools. They, uh, you know, they stepped up here earlier this year. We were really, really uh, hoping that we could have a really good truck show. We were we were planning on going bigger and better this year. You know, we had a bigger tent lined up. We had uh, more things going on, more food, everything. And then, of course, this COVID happened and it just shut everything down. And it, it just, it tore into us bad. We, we did not like that at all. But we're, uh, Trucker Tools has stepped up big. They, they've really supported us and, and wanted us to keep doing what we're doing. And and, uh, and they're really looking forward to getting to a show with us. So so hopefully we'll get we'll get that done. But uh, they're, they've got a great app. Check them out. They, you can go book loads or you can... Uh, uh, find truck stops or even Walmarts or maintenance services. You know, uh, they got updates where you can get the way stations and stuff like that. It's all, all in one app. Really, really nice outfit they got going on over there. We really appreciate everything they've done for us. So uh, check them out at uh, truckertools.com and you go on to your app store, you download their app and they got everything going on in their, their new app over there. Uh, even parking spaces and stuff like that. Uh, but just uh, let them know that uh, you appreciate everything they're doing for Red Neck and Ice because uh, we really appreciate that. So, so let them know. And uh, so, yeah, what happened was, is uh, there was an article released about a month ago uh, over the Landline magazine uh, website, and uh, it kind of hit a nerve with me because it, what it was was the FMCSA came out with exemptions, and I, I didn't I didn't know that they did that. I I really didn't know that they. Uh, uh, would actually send a carrier a carrier could ap apply for an exemption doing their job that they're doing and uh, they came out with a couple of them uh, actually they only came out with one exemption and then another one was denied and it kind of funny to me because it seems like the one that got denied you know so the one that they approved was from ex extreme logistics and they haul fireworks so what they've asked for was an exemption of the 14-hour rule uh, during the time that they'd have to deliver fireworks, which they say in the in the exemption, it's from June 28th to July 8th. And what it does is it allows them to not have to count any of their off-duty or sleeper time to their 14 hours. And so my, my take on that is, is that so they, every time that they stop and go off-duty or stop and go in the sleeper, it doesn't count against their 14. So their 14 only counts if they're driving or, off, or on duty. And uh, I know what they're doing is they're probably making multiple deliveries a day and they want to be able to go off duty. That way they can keep making deliveries even past their 14. And because uh, that's what we all do. We all do that, don't we? we we're we not going to clean our clock 
uh, on our weekly 70 hour week off of, you know, on duty time. We're not going to do that. We, you know, we're, we're always going to make sure we have plenty of hours to drive and get miles because we get paid by the mile. So I think that, that what they're doing here is they're telling their drivers, you know, log the minimum do on duty time and then rest of the time go off duty. And that, of course, that off duty time doesn't count against your hours of driving during the day. You can, you keep going. So your total run could run 20 hours or 24 hours. You know, probably not, but you know, you can, you can extend it out till 18, 20 hours. And then as long as you're only driving 11 hours, but then you're doing multiple unloadings, as long as you had some off duty time in there, you can extend that out, you know, to keep on going. So it's never going to count against you, you know? So, uh, I just, I thought that was silly that they, you know, they ran that exemption because they denied another exemption from PTS worldwide and what they do is they haul highly sensitive freight for the Department of Defense. And what they want to do is they wanted an exemption so that they can run split sleeper like five and five or six and four, stuff like that. And of course, right now, the current rule is only eight and two. And by September 20 something, the rule will go to seven and three. And so they denied that the five and five could be used because they said that the PTS worldwide did not show significant analysis of the safety impact and how they were going to maintain safety standards as it results now. And I thought that was so silly because I always, I, I never saw any decrease in accidents when we went from, you know, the split sleeper five and five, do whatever you need to do to only being allowed to drive uh, or, or you have to sleep at least eight hours. You know, when we were doing five and five and then it went to eight, I don't, I don't think that there was that big of an impact. I mean, uh, you know, personally speaking, I always thought that five and five was better because you were, you know, well, actually the coolest thing about running a team, it was, it was flexible. You do whatever you needed to do. If, you, if, if one driver could drive, the other driver can drive. If one was tired, the other one can drive. It was always, you know, work it out the best way you knew how to do it. And being flexible running team was the best way to go. But this here, I mean, they said that their safety analysis, their research that the FMCSA has done has said that it has to be at least seven hours, that you have to be a, a stopped sleeper for at least seven hours. Now, like I said, it's always, I thought it was really cool that if you gave the driver the choice of being able to, you know, if he, let's say that you were down for uh, 10 hours. And then you got up and you went four hours down the road and you kind of just felt tired and you could uh, pull over and take a nap. Guess what? Take a nap. You know, if, if the if the hours of service were, were flexible enough, then the driver could make the decision on when they were tired. But now with the hours of service the way they are now, a driver can't make that decision. They have to roll because the clock's always ticking, you know. So so I think that uh, uh, given the driver the flexibility you know, being that as long as everybody stays uh, within parameters of, you know, responsibility, you know, you, if you got a responsible carrier, a responsible driver, you know, everybody's going to do what they feel is necessary to stay safe. You know, I understand that, that a lot of the cases were that the carriers were pushing the drivers, you know, well, sometimes, you know, I work behind the office too. Sometimes drivers, they need a little, little push, you know, and it, you don't, you don't take that much, you know, to, to tell the driver, you know, Hey, stop and get some rest, but let's get to work. You know, I mean, that's, that's what it's all about. So, but I always thought that was weird, you know, I, hours of service that, you know, they put the exemption in there for the uh, pandemic. And I always thought that was really silly. If, if, if they keep telling us that the hours of service are all about safety, then why do you keep changing and exempting it when you feel it's okay to do that? That don't make no sense to me. You know, I think that I should be able to change it because I think it's safer to change it. But I don't have the power to do that. But now government officials supposed to be smarter than everybody, you know went to law school or majored in, you know, underwater basket weaving. That guy, he, he actually is smarter than everybody else. So he's the one that gets to make the decision. And you know, that we're out here doing a job. We should be able to make those decisions. But, uh, I thought it was all about safety. So the rules shouldn't be changed. The rules shouldn't be exempted if they're about safety. I mean, out here, we don't, we don't, we don't exempt rules because they're inconvenient. You know, we follow rules because they're safe. You know, we, we do things, we have procedures because it's a safe thing to do because we check our tires because it's important to check your tires. 
you know, we make sure that we air up or we check the oil or we air up the tires or we check the brakes. We do that because it's safe to do that. You know, we, we, uh, we check all of our weights or we check our, our hazardous materials and make sure they're secure properly because it's safe to do that. It has nothing to do with, you know, follow. I mean, we, we follow rules because we have to follow rules, but we are safe because it's safe to be safe, you know, and, and it's common sense. You know, Mike Rowe always says safety third, which means that you never stop thinking about safety. Safety is always being thought about. It's it's when it when safety becomes part of like more than doing the job. If you can't do a job because there's too many safety rules or you can't do a job because, you know, the, the rules are not about safety. They're just all about compliance, you know, uh, barking out orders. That's that's what they're talking about. So. That kind of stuff like that just irritates me. But I thought you guys would be kind of cool to get a heads up on that. You know, uh, tell me what you think. You think that uh, exemptions are, are all right as long as they're done properly? Or, you know, of course, I know everybody out there, I know you are thinking about it. That You know, we're out here doing a job. We should be able to do what we feel is necessary. So that's and that's what I think about it. So, so yeah, Redneck and I's is uh, all about getting to the truck shows and serving food and having a great time in the parking lot. That's what we try to do. And we do these videos to help drivers understand the trucking industry better. We, we do these videos to help the regular folk out there understand the trucking business better. So, you know, we, we want everybody to understand that, you know, we're people out here too. And there's not robots in these trucks driving up and down the highway. There's, there's actual people doing a job and trying to, trying to do the best we can. So, so that's what it's all about. So everybody, you know, hey, check out our website at uh, redneckandize.com. Uh, give us, we're on Facebook. We're on Twitter. Uh, we're on a... Uh, uh, Instagram too. We share a lot of stuff out there, you know, cool things and articles and of course the videos about what's going on and everything. And, uh, and hope everybody's out there having a great day. So, uh, let us know, make sure you subscribe to the channel. We really appreciate it. And everybody have a great day out there and we'll see you later. Keep between the ditches. We'll see you out there on the road.